Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this week's tutorial, I'm teaching you how to paint a wood grain in watercolor. We are working on a segment of a wooden cutting board painting that I've been working on for a while now, and I'm going to teach you the tools, colors, and techniques that I use to create a realistic wood grain texture. This is kind of a part one to next week's video where I will be taking these same techniques and applying them to an object that you can follow along with. The materials that I'm using is Ponzi Yellow Deep, Yellow Okra, Nickel Quinacridone Gold, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Sienna 2 from from Mission Gold, Sepia, a deep red like Maroon Perline or Terra Rosa, and a Dioxazine Purple. Then I use various brushes. I use a number 6 for large segments, a number 4 for blending in small areas, and then I use some number 2 brushes and a number 1 brush for small details and working on the grain texture in the wooden cutting board. If you are curious about any of the products that I use in this video, everything will be linked in the description box down below. Now you can see that I went through and I put in a flat wash of color on all of the segments of the wooden cutting board. Like I said, we're only working on one segment today but I went through and I kind of followed my reference photo to have the different colors represent the different areas of the wooden cutting board and then I put just some pencil lines down to represent the grain in these segments so that I could more easily follow them when I'm going into painting them in watercolor. And then I go through and I just put down a really basic layer of my watercolor down over these pencil line segments so that I don't lose them. This doesn't have to be too technical, it's really just a guideline for you to follow later on and these are rough lines for you to follow that will most likely be covered and fit into the texture that you create later on. So don't worry about them being too perfect or too precise it's actually better for them to be a little bit messier. So then I'm just protecting my painting with a piece of paper so that I can kind of paint over this entire thing and not worry about getting oils from my hand on other pieces of the board that I'll be working on later on. So I'm going in with a very small brush. This is a number two brush and I am just going through and darkening some of the areas of the wood grain that I want to stand out in my cutting board. I'm using a sepia color and I'm just paying attention to the reference that I have and I'm darkening up some of these kind of curved lines and grain lines that are in my wooden cutting board and I'm focusing on adding like different knots and things like that that will add a lot of texture um, and variation to my wooden cutting board once I'm done. And you can see that I am closely following the really basic guidelines that I put down before and that is why you really don't have to worry about painting these lines down in kind of a messy fashion. Uh, this is only going to add to the final illustration and it's something that we are currently darkening. So if you end up messing up, if there's a little bit of a wobbly line or you made a mistake, then just play it up, pretend like it's a knot in the wood or some sort of curved variation in uh, the wood grain. And then I'm going in and I'm adding some darker areas to the corner of my wooden cutting board segment. I want it to be a little bit darker and I'm kind of blending it out, just kind of creating a darker section in that wood grain. Since there's a lot of variation in wood and you'll see that even in a really brief segment you'll see a lot of change in the color of the ward. It's a really natural thing so you can really experiment with it. It's something that you can mess up on and in the end, it'll still look natural, so don't worry about it too much if you end up making a mistake. And as you can see, I'm doing the same thing over at the other side. This is another darker segment in the cutting board, so I'm just going through and kind of darkening that, and you can see that my previous section, I had a little bit of um, like a like a backwash in the watercolor, and that texture is perfect. This is something that watercolor is so great for, because all of these kind of natural oopsies that you get with your watercolor create such a beautiful and natural look for this, and you didn't really have to do anything to create it. You can also see that I'm going through and darkening up a couple areas of this, making sure to rely on my reference image, but also just what looks nice. And I'm using different color browns and yellows in this. One color that I absolutely swear by is Burnt Sienna number no. 2 from Mission Gold. It's just such a beautiful wood color. It's honestly my go-to for this. I'm going through and I'm thickening up some of the lines in my wood grain, and I'm also adding some darker segments to my watercolor. Now in between the grain I want to have this kind of variation to it as if you almost have these tiny um, almost micro sections in between the grain of the wood. So I'm going through and I am darkening up the actual wood grain and then in some areas I'm going through with some um, of my various browns and I'm just creating like a darker look in between two grains of the wood uh, to really add this more natural look to it. And then in some areas I'm going through and I'm using mainly 
definitely a lot of sepia. Some of this segment was actually very dark, so I really wanted to emphasize those and make them nice and dark and bold and stand out. And I'm also going through and in between the wider sections of the grain that I put down initially in my first layer of watercolor, I'm going through and I'm adding some smaller areas in between those. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a lot of smaller wood grain texture and I'm able to go through and use the first layer of the grain that I painted as kind of like a guideline so that I can follow the natural curves and width variation uh, within these smaller sections that I am painting. So a lot of this is layering and adding more detail. It's something where if you look at it, on a grand scale, it looks uh, very intimidating, very hard to do, but once you break it down into these smaller sections, it's really quite easy to manage and to work on, and you can very easily go through there and start adding more detail, more lines, more texture, more variation, um, and more shadows to your painting that you're working on, and it just becomes very natural throughout the entire process. So if you're worried about it, uh, just remember to break it down into pieces that make sense for you and how you work because if you do that if you focus on your painting in a more micro scale it'll make a lot more sense and just keep coming back to it I mean this painting there's really no deadline it's a self-initiated project that I'm working on it's just for me and I keep coming back to it because I find that working on one segment of this cutting board takes quite a bit of time and I just like kind of having a project that I can come back to every now and then. So you can see that I'm hopping around on this cutting board quite a bit and I'm going from side to side because I am putting down my areas and I want these to be distinct and dark and I don't want them to be blended in a lot of the time. So as I'm putting down my grain texture, I'm swapping back from side to side and working on the other side of the paint so that I can give the first side time to dry. Uh, I do this with areas where I am working on uh, maybe blending out and creating that darker area in the wood grain and I'm also doing that for the actual little wood grain segments uh, that I'm painting and creating throughout the painting. Uh, so if you want to blend these out and have a slightly softer look you can do that um, but I would say pay attention to the reference photo that you are using and looking at and see how soft you want it to be. Another great tip is to let it dry a little bit and kind of get to know the watercolor that you were using because a lot of times you're going to put your watercolor down and it's going to be a lot darker than you want it to be. You want to wait for this color shift to happen so that you know uh, basically what color that you're going to end up getting and not freak out too soon and try to correct it because you're going to end up doing more damage to your paper and more work in the long run uh, when in reality it'll end up being lighter overall and little mistakes in something like this just add to its charm and it's more uh, realistic look that I'll have in the end. And here you can see I'm just going through and once again just darkening my initial wood grain pattern and then going through and just adding variation. I'm making some of the lines wider and I'm also going through and I am adding some other grain lines to my pattern to make it more interesting. Uh, some of the grain I'm using my burnt sienna colors and in some I'm going through and I'm adding some sepia, some other sections where I want them to maybe be a little bit more red, I'm adding a red color to it like a maroon perylene or a terra rosa color. Uh, remember if you are doing this you want to try to pick translucent or transparent colors because you're doing a lot of glazing and layering. Uh, you don't want something that's going to be really opaque and cover your work so much in your layers because if you do happen to lift some of that it can actually end up covering a lot of those details that you've worked so hard for in your painting to get. And here you can see I'm actually adding a really really wide section uh, to my cutting board like I really emphasized that area in the grain. Uh, so don't worry about you know going too far. If it make sense if it looks like that in the reference photo or if you feel like it would look good or make more sense in your painting, uh, then definitely feel free to do that and to experiment. Uh, if you are using a reference image, use it for your inspiration, your guideline. Make sure that it's allowing you to see the more natural look of the, the cutting board and to really achieve that realistic look that you want. You don't have to look at it and copy it completely perfect 
perfectly. Um, you don't have to worry about it that much. And it'll actually be a little bit simpler if you are kind of simplifying the, the image that you're painting a little bit. Like the grain that I have here, it's actually a little bit thicker than what you're going to find in the reference image that I have. And that's fine. Um, and I would recommend, you know, not having a reference image, especially if you're taking something online. I would recommend not copying it completely. All right, and that is all for this week's video. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you would give it maybe a like or if, and even comment down below and let me know what you think. I hope that you have found this tutorial to be helpful and I hope that you find it helpful uh, for next week's video as we go into the subject a little bit more in depth. If you were curious about any of the materials that I used, please check the description box down below. They're all linked and I will see you all next week. Bye!